Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and I'm back with another half marathon training update for you. I've been trying to get back to some more sustained, kind of consistent training uh, in mind of the Yeovil half marathon at the end of this month. But it's been really, really tough recently. The weather's just been so unpredictable. Some days it's been blasting me with strong winds and rain. And then the next day, I'm quite able to run around in a t-shirt. You don't know what it's gonna be doing from day to day. So it's been quite tough to get anything consistent done. That side, I'm gonna give you a rundown today on the past week's worth of training. So started off last week with two three mile sessions. So nice and easy in the morning, around about eight minutes, 22 seconds per mile. Cut the heart rate nice and low, down around about 131 BPM. Taking some time to relax and recover. Quite a busy weekend, had a musical performance as per usual on the Saturday evening, so it was nice to have a break on the Sunday. Did I have a break on the Sunday? I did. It was nice to get some recovery miles in on the Monday morning, nice and easy. Later in the day, I almost repeated that session completely, or well, I think it was about eight minutes, 23 seconds per mile, with a run commute back from the office with the new backpack I've been making use of, the Osprey Daylight Plus. Been using this shoe for those easy day runs. Kind of like this shoe for that kind of pace. Although that side, it did feel good the week before going at a more considerable speed. This shoe actually over time has shown itself to be quite a versatile tool. I was having a chat with one of the club runners yesterday, James Hutt. He's just invested in a pair in this exact colorway. Uh, he certainly enjoyed them on his race on the Sunday. James has got quite large feet. I think he said he was a size 13, and he particularly enjoyed the fact that he could get a wider fitting in the New Balance. Once I get up to 100 miles in the 1080, I'm gonna get some of James's thoughts, actually. James has gone through loads and loads of running shoes, so it'd be nice to get a, another fresh opinion and a fresh take on the 1080 V10. So as I say, running with the backpack on, I don't know exactly what weight it was, but it was pretty weighty. I had the suit. You gotta have the suit, obviously, for the office. I don't think I had the dress shoes in there. A coat, all sorts of stuff. It was pretty weighty. So certainly keeping things in that moderate and endurance kind of zone for me. I know that some people have messaged me recently saying I run too fast, I run too fast all the time. I've gotta say those lower paces for me are lower. I'm not really working that hard as you can see keeping things about 131 beats per minute is well well within that lower heart rate for me so that is certainly an easy day for me i have very very long legs i'm kind of like a giraffe um, there's not much in the middle and then yeah you get the picture so when i'm talking about easy that for me is an easier pace i understand that's not the case for all of you on the tuesday clocked in about six miles at seven minutes 37 per mile cue the aircraft sound so relatively close to my kind of tempo pace, but there were some challenging headwinds and it was very, very cold actually out that evening. Made things a little bit tougher than they should have been. Cold rain ensured I needed some layers. I had a running vest on, a long sleeve, and my Nike coat. A few of you have pointed that out recently, that Nike coat. It's uh, certainly has some character about it, I think that's what you could say. I even put the seal skin socks to use, the, you know, those waterproof socks that I got earlier in the year that my mother-in-law, my father-in-law got for me for Christmas. I have to say this time around, they worked an absolute treat. They performed admirably well this time. There's loads and loads of standing water. It was absolutely chucking it down. In fact, I had to motivate myself to go out. And when Ed Bud needs to motivate himself to go out running, you know it's pretty bad. Use the Saucony Triumph 17 for that run. I was really, really excited to get back out on it again, and it was certainly testing conditions. I've been chatting with Kev Burmaster, a long-time viewer of the channel, and he was waxing lyrical about these fantastic shoes, but we were both a little worried. Well, how are they gonna perform in wet weather? I have to say, they performed very well. I was a little worried. There's so much foam, certainly here, around the heel area, and the tongue has got a decent wadge of foam. But no problems there, not a single issue. Feet were bone dry with a combination of the Saucony Tramp 17 and the Seal Skin socks. I mean, there's loads of standing water. It was a rain soaked run. Average heart rate on that was about 143, a little higher than my recovery runs the previous day. But I think that was mainly due to the fact I was wearing most of my running clothes to try and keep warm. I think the headwind really hindered me the first three miles, but the second three miles coming back, uh, it was certainly a little bit easier. I got to feel a bit more of that bounce that I really enjoyed in my initial runs in the Triumph 17. Just getting out there at all, really, when weather's inclement like that, I think it's a real win. You gotta kind of feel proud of yourself. In fact, if you're a runner and you're getting out there, always feel proud of yourselves. I don't like these people that 
kind of comment oh, about people's paces oh, they run slow or they're not real runners if you get out there and you're running you are a real runner don't listen to them so the wednesday was a much milder day it was actually beautiful out there really nice pleasant kind of sunshine nice temperature around about eight or nine degrees so much so that i could even get away with just wearing a t-shirt headed out for my six mile initial run in the evo ride last week hopefully you've already watched both myself and Emily Run Like Hellers reviews on that shoe, our initial reviews. Hope you've enjoyed those videos. We really enjoyed collaborating. Thanks, Emily. I hope we can do the same again in the very near future. If you haven't already, please go and subscribe to her channel. I'll stick a card up in the corner. So that run was about six miles with three miles sandwiched in the middle at around about seven minutes, nine seconds per mile. So I wanted to see if I could push the pace a little bit more in this shoe, as well as doing some kind of more tempo paces before and after. I think this one's certainly firm. It does feel quite similar to the original Zoom Fly uh, from Nike. I really enjoyed it as a tempo shoe. I'm not gonna be sure it's for everybody though. Want to give a shout out to another YouTuber, Jordan Thomas. Thanks for tuning in, Jordan. And your comment about the Evo ride was quite interesting, actually. Yes, I do think it's quite similar to the Zoom Fly. In as such as, I think you can use it as a tempo shoe, and you could probably use it for some sort of long runs at pace. But I don't think it's quite as clunky as saying like the Zoom Fly 3. Certainly when I pulled the pace back a little bit, it's more of a kind of lower tempo pace. It still felt good. It still felt manageable. With the Zoom Fly 3, I just felt that shoe was kind of tough and clunky if you're going to do some kind of interval work. So I think this one could be a little bit more versatile than I first thought. Hope that answered your question, Jordan. Do check out his channel. I'll stick a link up in the corner somewhere so you can go and check him out. So I think for me, the shoe performed well at about seven minutes, 22 seconds per mile on that session. It certainly didn't feel out of place amongst some of the lighter shoes that I've utilized of recent time. It is a little bit more weighty, but that guide sole kind of situation you've got going on at the front of the shoe really gave me an injection of pace. It felt great. It felt like the transition from stride to stride was really smooth. It's quite, kind of felt quite exciting actually running in that shoe. Something that I've not felt since, oh yeah, certainly that Zoom Fly. It made me want to run fast again. It makes me want to go out in it, this shoe. I don't think it's that narrow, actually. I don't, I don't feel that it's actually too narrow. I know Emily did find it quite narrow, but for me personally, I don't think it's too narrow. Do they do width fittings in Asics, Beast? Do they, Beast? No? Okay. She doesn't know. So another easy three miles run commute back home from the office on the following day. Temps were dropping pretty fast though, so I wanted to get back quickly to the solitude and warmth of the house. Utilized the old Triumph 17 again. Even at about seven degrees, my hands were absolutely freezing, so I took a quick stop not long after the start of the run to get my gloves on. Probably gonna be my next purchase is a set of better gloves. My poor old Nike racing gloves are starting to fall to pieces in my hands. Kept the cadence solid and the effort firmly in that kind of recovery endurance kind of zone. Woke up feeling somewhat beat up on the Friday. It had been a tough week, so took a rest day. Was testing out the leg on the Saturday with four miles. Kept it at around about seven minutes, 57 per mile. Hip was feeling a little bit better. Didn't feel quite so beat up because I knew I had to be 100% or I wasn't going to race on the Sunday at the Sherborne Sports Centre 10k. What? Vaporfly 4% you say? For the race? Why don't you use the next percent? Well, I'll explain that. So the Sherbourne 10k starts up around the sports centre in Sherbourne, which is in Dorset, a town quite close to Yeovil. This isn't an easy 10k though, it's not all on road. Well, I say it's on road, it is on road in fact. But there's some country lanes thrown in there which, after the storms of recent time, were very, very muddy, full of loads of twigs, rubble, and lots and lots of mud. Around about 430 foot of elevation gain on this course as well. And that's all within about two miles. So the miles, I think it's miles three and four, that's where all the elevation gain is. Yeah, just, it's just uphill. It's quite a tough psychological race. I knew I had to keep some in reserve, ready for times where I could push. So miles one and two, relatively flat, and miles five and six are completely downhill. At miles three and four is where you need to keep some stuff in reserve to keep on motoring up the hills at a nice consistent pace. I hit pace of 6 minutes 39 and 6 minutes 46 for the first two miles. So a little bit under that target half marathon pace that I have in mind. Both cadence and pace though took a bit of a dive on miles 3 and 4. I really wanted to remain focused on being consistent in terms of pace on 
going up the elevation. It's certainly a big sigh of relief when you get to the top of mile four and it's all downhill. At least that's what I thought until I saw the state of some of the roads. You have to kind of pick one side of the road. In the middle is where kind of all the mud's kind of congregating because it's kind of like a single lane country road. There's no opportunity to kind of go down the middle. If you do, certainly in these, I was just gonna go flying, I was gonna slip. That side, I did see a number of runners wearing 4% fly knits. Lots and lots, in fact. It's all down here, miles five to six, right back to the sports center. And I came through the finish in about 44 minutes, 30 seconds. Still waiting for official times on that one. In fact, let's have a look. No, nothing there yet. Works out about an average pace of seven minutes, three seconds per mile. But then when I did a grade adjusted pace on Strava, it was saying six minutes, 55. So I was a little bit more satisfied, I guess, with that result. I think on a flat course, I would have smashed it. Although I'm happy, I'm happy with that result. Average cadence was about 174 steps per minute and an average heart rate of 155 beats per minute. So about 63% of that was in kind of threshold heart rate pace. And in terms of pace zones, only 4% of that run was in anything below tempo pace. So really, really pleased with that. Kept things nice and consistent and improved a little bit on my time from last year. So a good six miles at very close to target half marathon pace. And I gotta be honest, I felt really good afterwards as well. I felt nice and nimble. I felt like I could have kept on going if I wanted to. There was a lot left in the tank there at the end. Uh, there was a chap who we were pretty much neck and neck right down through miles five and six. Um, I let him take me just towards the end and I knew I had some boost in the tank to utilize. I think it was the uh, Lucky Charms I'd eaten that morning and they gave me enough to power on through the finish. Managed to get through another week of training with some good progress there. Happy with my 10k race time there on a challenging course. One day I'm going to do a course that's just nice and flat, you know, and it doesn't go up some ridiculous hills. Why do they offer these? I've got to say, I've been wanting to get this shoe back out again and kind of refresh my memories about it. It's certainly a shoe that's given me my half marathon personal best and it's also a shoe that gave me my 10k personal best as well so really do love this shoe love the way it looks and i love the way it feels on foot as well it really did feel nice to get this back on and with very limited warm-up before the 10k race on sunday i still managed to produce the goods in it so really loving this shoe i will be sad when it starts to degrade a little bit more and i'll kind of put it out to a, a tempo sort of usage then yeah my videos aren't complete unless we have a short musical interlude over the course of the last few days, I think perhaps because it's been so cold and wet and windy and generally unpleasant, I've dug this old album out from Aztec Camera, a Scottish band from the early 80s. Their debut album here, Highland Hard Rain, certainly one of my favourites. I've enjoyed this for many, many years since I first found it. My drummer, Alan Flint, had uh, passed me a tape and said, you really need to check this band out, especially a couple of the tunes towards the middle of the album. Walk out to winter and uh, we could send letters. Two of my personal favourites from this one. Absolutely fantastic virtuoso guitar work on here from guitarist and songwriter Roddy Frame. I think it certainly stood the test of time as well. Some 80s albums kind of sound a bit dated these days. The production values perhaps weren't quite so good. Instruments can kind of get lost in mixes and stuff, but I think this one really stands out. It's got a kind of cold kind of sheen about all the production, but the tracks are great. The songwriting's superb. And as I say, some fantastic guitar work on here. So do check it out. Aztec Camera's Highland Hard Rain. That's just about all for me for today, guys. I do thank you for tuning in and watching through to the end. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already and please click the bell down below to get notifications as to when new videos will launch. Please comment down below with any questions you might have for me and make sure you share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.